welcome back to adobelife.com for our day three of digital illustration. And for the next two hours, we're today together with Susanne Helmich. Hi. Hello, Suzanne. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. Yeah, how how's you? Paris treating you? Oh, it's hot, but it's Three amazing. days in Paris, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you have time to visit something today? Uh, well, no. <laughs> well, well, we <laughs> had some, we had yeah, some yes. amazing lunch. We had, we had lunch. We had a team lunch, yes. Mm -hmm. The whole team together. Yeah. That's actually the only time that the whole st the, all the streamers meet together. Yeah. Ex except on on the first day when we met to check that everything oh, yeah, was working, right? right? Yeah. All right. So, welcome back to the stream. For the next two hours, we will be doing digital illustration with Suzanne. And, but before we start, I just wanted to uh, mention a few things about adobelife.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, come on over to adobelife.com because there's a whole bunch of other information there as well. Let me just, uh, on us, let me, let me see if I can, let me just talk about it. Um, so basically there's the chat there, there's the schedule of the upcoming streams. There's gonna be two more streams after us, one with uh, Sebastian Hu and one uh, with Therese Larsen, uh, which uh, will be the last night shift of this three day, uh, this incredible three day stream on digital illustration. And then there's a button for the replays and uh, many of you ask uh, for the replays. Yeah. Yes. Everything that we do here, uh, that we've done here, the past two days and today, is going to be there. It's already there almost, uh, for the past uh, in the in, under the replays, so you can actually watch what Suzanne did on the first day, on the second day, and what she will be be doing today. So there's a nice replay there, and of course. Last but not least, there's a button for the Edvard Munch contest. And let me just go over to that, to that page. It's actually, um, uh, it links to this page here. Let me just, uh, where is it? Here. There we go. Ah, now we have this here in the middle. Are you in front of the, oh, of the GoPro? My, my right? Oh, right ah, you know what? I think the GoPro just got moved. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that, uh, I'm gonna move that afterwards. But anyway. <laughs> In the, in the, uh, on this web page, there's actually um, um, everything you need to participate in a contest that we've got going for the next, uh, well, until July the 14th. That's when the deadline is. And basically it's called the hidden treasures of creativity. And basically what we did there is we asked Kyle, Kyle Webster, who just finished his stream uh, just a few minutes ago, to recreate the brushes that Edvard Munch used to uh, to paint his screen painting, and um, and what um, uh, basically the museum gave all of the information that um, uh, that Kyle needed to actually reproduce those brushes, and you can use them. You can you can see down there. You can use them in Photoshop CC and also in uh, Adobe Photoshop Sketch on the iPad or on your Android tablet. And they're free to download. And they're free to download. So. Go to that website, uh, it's on adobelife.com, down at the bottom. Uh, download those brushes, they're free, and you can use them forever. And paint like Edward Munch, all right? But then we have, of course, a whole bunch of tutorials of how to get started, all the way uh, to giving your artwork an antique look uh, with Adobe Stock. Also on how to install your brushes mm -hmm. and where to find them afterwards. Yes. Yes, that's very important because, uh, especially for Photoshop, because some of, some of them are brushes, some of them are presets, so yeah. it's uh, it's all explained inside of the videos. And then there's this contest, and basically what we ask you to do is to use uh, these uh, uh, these Kyle brushes to recreate your own version of the stream. All right, and basically you have until July the 14th to uh, to submit your work. Make sure to read the official rules here. Oops, no, I didn't want to go to the rules now. <laughs> the official rules here, and also there's terms and conditions. You know all that legal mumbo jumbo that you need to be aware of. Please read it. And basically all you need to do is to download the brushes, watch the tutorials, and create your own uh, your own version of the screen. And um, basically there's going to be a, an incredible jury, I'm going to just highlight them here, uh, com uh, composed by Russell Brown from Adobe and Michael Chez, uh, Zach McCulloch, uh, a lead designer from Behance, Andy Sandoz, the uh, president of DA, uh, D DNAD uh, 2016, and leading artists, which we had on the stream, or which we still have on the stream uh, today, Kyle Webster, Teresa Larsen, Susanne Helmich, oh, there's a typo there, and Sebastian Hu, you see? 
Always. Yeah. Ah, always. We're gonna, always happens. We're, go we're gonna have to have that corrected. And the real cool thing is that there is gonna be one winner, and the grand prize is composed of many different things. So yeah. first of all, six thousand uh, euros uh, in cash, a one-year subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud, a uh, hundred Adobe stock credits. And then also um, a ticket and all expenses paid to go to Adobe Max, which will be held in Las Vegas this year in October. That's all right? just trip number one. That's just trip yeah. number one. <laughs> so basically you can get your 6,000 euros, have a free trip to Las Vegas and gamble all your 6,000 euros. Yeah, just but lose yeah. it all. <laughs> well, you could, but I, I, uh, maybe you can buy, uh, I don't know, one of those, like these... Wacom Cintiqs or, uh, you know, maybe something for your work. Who knows? And uh, But I think the best prize of all is that your representation, the winning representation of your scream uh, will actually be uh, ex exhibited in the Monk Museum in Oslo. And you will get a free ticket also to go to Oslo and see your artwork in the Monk Museum right next to the uh, to, uh, to Monk's screen. All right. So I think this is an incredible grand prize. Oh, yes. And I really encourage all of you uh, creators out there to participate. All right. You, you, have, you have a lot of time. It's until July the 14th. So let's move back to to your screen and um, and uh, and we're gonna be continuing working on uh, on expressions I guess uh, from what I see this is what we worked on yesterday yeah right? this is actually I was just quickly mm -hmm. gonna show what I did in the other days and then I wanted to do a character from scratch because I thought a that character might from be scratch. yeah that might be mm. interesting so okay. I show how to start with the with the rough lines and the clean lines right. and flat colors and uh, you might use your likeness me yes. all right. How would how do you want to do that? Uh, just a screenshot. Uh, uh, yeah, we could. Is this M. Shares? Okay. You know how how we're gonna do that? I'm gonna make a screenshot. I'm gonna make a screenshot on my computer and put it in a library so that you can use it. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. So let me see. Can I do? Can I make? You know what? I can do it from with my phone. Actually, you can take you can take a picture with my phone mm -hmm. exactly like you want it. Uh, let me go to the camera. And I'll put it in a library, okay? Oh, good. So here you go. All right. So what kind of picture do you want? See. Is that enough space? Yeah. Yeah? So... Is that the lamp? Like the epic wizard you want to Oh, the wizard, spell. yeah. Yes, that's perfect. Does that work? Oh, yeah, I could even use your hand as a reference. Oh, too. there we go. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in a CC library, okay? Uh, using... Uh, my phone for that. There's actually a Creative Cloud app. Creative Cloud. I'm going to create a new folder called Suzanne. Create. And I'm going to upload Here we go, there we go. And I'm gonna start adding content, okay. Uh, plus, uh, upload files, uh, camera roll, and I'm gonna take that picture, upload. And then from there it goes on the Mac library here? Or it it goes in, that? you will find it in right Photoshop. there in Photoshop. What? Yeah. yeah, so this is my, this is under my, uh, which, can I see um, uh, under, under the help menu? What is what this Photoshop is registered to? To shoot digital. Okay, let, let's use that one. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take my folder and um, I'm going to uh, actually yeah no. yeah let, let's do it like that. Let's let's make collaborators and I'm going to add a collaborator. Can you just show me the email again? Yeah. So it is a shoe, S H U E, digital, digital at gmail. So at gmail. So just as some basic yeah. info for people, I oh. always start my images with a gray background rather than white, because if you stare at a white canvas for really long, it tends to hurt your eyes. So I always like like this mid tone gray to begin with, maybe a little lighter. 
and the the size is always at least 3000 pixels in the shortest dimension so right now since it's portrait this should be at least 3000 pixels hmm. and that's only because um, I like to work really big the more pixels you have the more details you can put in All right, so does the Creative Cloud app tell you something? If you go up there to the here and uh, uh, Akai, uh, no. Let me see how how I oh, you know what I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna send it to myself and put it on the USB stick. Um, I, I must because this is not registered to me, so I'm not I don't really know what permissions uh, Sebastian gave. So I'm just gonna email it to me and uh, right. we'll do that very quickly. Well, I, I just need it in the last phase. Anyway, ah, okay, so. okay, perfect. First, so I have time. Yeah, you have plenty of time, no rush. Let's see. Super big brush pack. I think I'm gonna sketch it out with just a regular Photoshop round brush, you know, the one with the pen pressure in there. So the first phase is always thinking about what is the post going to be like. And I do that very, very simple. So you kind of want this, this confident pose there with like a, a poofy chest. Having all the weight of the body lean on one hip and the other one go to the side. I see a lot of familiar faces in chat when I arrive off road. Yeah. So happy to see that. Hi everyone! <laughs> so as you can see, I keep this super, super simple. I'm not really focusing on exact anatomy at this point, but just where do I want things to go? Do I want a certain perspective for things? Oh, there was one invitation in the CC app. Let's Ooh. see. Was that here? Uh, I, I don't, I, don't ah, I want an invitation up here, of course. Oh. Uh, accept. All right, so we did it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now it should be synced to your uh, to your files. Not, not in the library, yeah. but you see, okay, now if you go to the files, uh go to go go back mm -hmm. and go to uh to active uh no um fichier okay ouvrir le dossier and there's ah. this there it is and you can just drag and drop the image onto your photoshop boom yeah it worked thank you so much who was that that was paying so much attention that was james Thank you, James. The cloud works. Yes. Oh, it already looks like it's a smart object. So let's see if I can still cut it. Because when I do this, oh yeah, rasterize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's cool. All that excess space that we don't need. It could go a little smaller. Oh, thank you, Alexandre Becquet. Active fichier. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> I just use the Creative Cloud in English and in German sometimes, but that was kind of weird in French. Actif. What does that mean? It meant active. What? The, how does it? How is it called in? In. It means assets. Oh, assets. So. The, okay. Le, the assets are the actif. Okay. Well, I tell you what, people, let me just share that folder with the world, with everybody here in the chat, and uh, you can you can try to uh, to draw me as well. Oh. What do you think about that, people? Hmm? Challenge mode. Challenge mode. Yes, let's go here and uh... Let me see if I can get that to work. Let's 
nice hand gesture. But let's do that over there. You can use Kyle's brushes to do that. So here we go. And, oops. Send link. Create public link. And I'm gonna put it in the chat. That is so brave of me. Like people will have my picture and you know, it's always dangerous. What will people do with it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they could put you on a horse. Maybe they could. The one from yesterday. Boom. Oh no, that's YouTube. No, that's an old link. Can I delete that one? Remove. Okay. So as you can see, this is super, super rough. I'm just looking for the silhouette I want to do. Pointy, wizardy shoulders. Now there's this neat little trick that a friend of mine once taught me that the way you position the feet has everything to do with how your body mass is balanced. Now to calculate where the toes and the heels are, you can draw a line. I'm going to do that with a, a different color. Let's do that with super obnoxious bright green. <laughs> From That's right, Evil Ceres says he could put me on a horse because he has my 3D model. Because one day I shared my 3D model with the world, yes. Oh. I had myself scanned in 3D. And so you can just put it into Photoshop and do whatever. Wow. Well, that makes it a whole lot or, easier. Or, uh, you know, with Adobe Fuse. Uh, but to find a center point, you're usually looking at this bit. So right underneath your head. That's usually mm. where your center point is. Is. But there are small exceptions, like let's say you're making a big jump then or running. That's when you actually push your body weight forward. But if you're standing, then you want to keep balance. And the balance get, gets distributed throughout your hips and your legs. So if you find that center point, put it down. Whatever you want to do with your feet, you can draw a cross like this. So. Get the heel from one foot and connect it with the toes of the other and do the same thing the other way around. See, and now I see right here, what I did with the feet does not correspond with the line. So what I did with the feet makes the center line be here. So that's a good way to check, like, oh, do I have my, my balance set up right? Now to fix that, I'll just have to adjust the positioning of the feet. More of the foot there. Marianne is asking. That's a question that comes up frequently. Yeah, I, like, do you have more? Do you feel more comfortable drawing men or women, or is it the same? For me, uh, it's mostly men, though. They they, they seem a little bit more simple. It, it's got mm. all those straight lines, where women are way more curved and, and more subtle. So I tend to draw women with very strong jaw lines and stuff. So let's see if I, if I did the feet right. There. Heel to toe. Toe to heel. Yeah, that's about right. So it almost crosses right there at the center. So this would do for just a base. Typically, if this was work I'd had to do for a client, I make a whole row of these very rough blue lines before I... Do you want me to show you quickly what I did with Felix? Yeah, sure. This is with what I did with my 3D, 3D model. Mm -hmm. and basically, I did one like me, like Han Solo in the, <laughs> in the metal. <laughs> and I put myself on the... Oh yeah, I saw yeah, that one. On the, the wing of a plane. <laughs> And uh, okay, so that's, that's a 3D version. That's a, that's a 3D so model. I thought yeah. it was a photo. No, no, no. It's a 3D model that you can turn around and like have the light. Ev everything is so cool. Wow. Yeah. Like that's in Project Felix. Yeah. Oh, it's okay if that's been asked before. No problem. 
Yeah. So the next stage, I will just tone this layer down. So I got it in the background. Hey, Titus. You say Titus or Titus? Uh, both goes. Oh. Like Dutch is Titus and Titus. English is just Titus. I mean, it's an old Roman name. Mm, yeah, like Rufus. Yeah. <laughs> This could be a good moment to use your reference. That's why occasionally I actually make my workstation bigger than my drawing. Oh, let's not make that green. Black. Yeah. So I can play the trick as if everything is outside the workstation. Whee! Oh, thank you, Zeliko. Yes, it's pressing Control Alt while holding right click while you size the brush the, in the size that you want. Yes, absolutely. And I was doing it on my machine, I think, and I don't have a right click here. I didn't have a mouse. And Gray Weather is asked, what artists are you inspired by? Ooh, so many though, so many. Um, I like a whole lot of the artists that work for Magic the Gathering. They have this really nice painterly style that I'm into. Uh, also inspired by old masters from uh, Rembrandt to Bouguereau. But I think the stuff that inspires me most are movies and TV shows and the camera work of it. There's this TV show called Black Sails, and the mm. way they do the lighting and the mm -hmm. camera work and that is just sublime. Just like this other show called uh, Better Call Saul. Yes, Have you seen that? Yeah, I've oh. seen the whole season. I finished it yesterday. The last season. Did you uh, see it? I'm not sure. I think I think I haven't. Cause it's so it's, really it's wonderful. But the cinematography in that show is brilliant. It's almost like modern art. That's right, because you've studied film before you started illustration, right? Yeah. So all my, my storytelling experience comes from that. Is it this Magic the Gathering, the card game? Yes. So the lines we're doing now are still pretty rough but it's to determine what I want to do with the clothing. So like I said with uh, previous streams, you know, my own stream, I never instantly go for clean line art. I like to explore a little bit. So the hand, such a cool hand gesture. Painting it in a, a mirrored version now. Magical gathering. <laughs> it's very magical indeed. There's this. Um, I think it's either a French or Italian artist, and I keep forgetting his name. But he made a comic book series called Eagles of Rome. Mm. I oh, talked about that yesterday, yeah. yes. And it's beautiful. I found this really sweet special edition here in the store, and I had to buy it. It was signed, and it made me super happy. Yeah, it's so stunning. What does it say? Uh, I want to see if there's a... There's a special website for it, but... Doesn't look like it. Enrico Marini. That's it. Yeah, the Netherlands and Belgium and uh, uh, these countries have a very. And I mean, also Italy, for that matter, has a very long history of comic uh, book art. Well, I, would, I wouldn't even call them comics anymore because yeah. it's like graphic novels. Graphic yeah. novels, yes. going on.
Maybe the hand needs to be higher after all. We could do some cool weird staff. Crystal in there. Yeah, a Dark show is getting a Doctor Strange General Zod of this old Superman feel with this drawing. Hmm. Yeah. I I prefer to be Doctor Strange than General Zod. General Zod was bad man. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was in the movie recently. I love the costume design of that uh, Doctor Strange movie. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. If you go for the stereotypical uh, curly shoe tips. For this, I can either jump to line art or go straight to color and do everything as simple mm. color blocks. But I think I will I will do line art first. That's usually better. This is another phase that I'll make transparent. And Susanna is working on her own graphic novel. That's right. Yeah. It's called uh, Caldera. And it has four different lead characters, and it's all about the theme of imprisonment. So there's mm. different ways mm. how you can be imprisoned, from being stuck in an actual jail, to being imprisoned of society's expectations, of royalty. So all these four characters, they have this intertwined story. They'll beat one another. You know that movie, uh, Crash? Uh... A time ago, or there's also a movie called Babel. Babel, Babel yeah, yeah. yeah. They all have that same thing where there's multiple characters yes, with yes, yes. stories, ah, yes, all yes. their stories mm -hmm, at some mm -hmm. point get together. What size is the drawing and the artboard? That's it's like seven thousand. You make them usually? Uh, let's see, and it's size right now it's like a really weird number. Oh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's seven thousand. Yeah, about seven thousand yeah. pixels. But that's only because I had ah, extra yeah, because you, yeah. black added mm -hmm. to it. But generally, anything above 3,000 pixels mm -hmm. will, will do. Always on 300 uh, DPI, just in case you want to print it. All right, this bit is all about accuracy. Yeah, there's many movies that have this, or even books that, you know, that have these uh, different stories that all come together at a certain point. Yeah. But the, I already made a website for my book, so people mm -hmm. who are interested, I also have this this newsletter the you can Caldera. subscribe to. Com. Yes, with a with a Y. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, you can look into some of the drawings I already made for it. You can read up on the characters. And very soon, I'm gonna show a preview of the book, and it's gonna be the first forty to sixty pages. Hmm. It's gonna be a really big book, probably about. 400 pages in total. Kind of crazy. I might have to split it up into actual books. Because you know how I guess if, if a book is really thick, the pages tend to tear out really easily. Mm. You don't want that. Paul Weaver, I just posted it. And thanks for joining. Yeah, it's good to see my friends support. Let's see, would you say you make an equal amount of money illustrating, or does the work and love of the game outweigh the payment? Um, I mean, this is directed towards the game industry, right? And and just being a freelance artist, 
I think when you're new to the industry, it's all about uh, putting your name out there. So every beginning artist will just almost have to accept every job mm. that comes their way that has at least a, a normal sort of payment. Because you should never work for something that is close to slavery. You don't want to have uh, no. unfair pay. That's not good for anyone. You're better and off if you not. can avoid things you don't enjoy doing, yeah, yes. I think that only comes at a later stage. Yes, you think so? Yeah, I remember my I, first clients uh, were just like horrible assignments. Yes, yeah. and that made you suffer, not sleep oh, yeah. at night. Yeah, I had to get all angry. So really funny, funny things. Weird, weird, weird things. And Titus would get all your anger. Oh yeah. <laughs> but he understands. I get his anger too. <laughs> Um, but yeah, for me at this moment, mm. uh, the f the fun of work, the, the joy I get out of it uh, outweighs the pay. But that is a luxury. That is only because I can afford to say no to stuff I don't like. But there have been times that are just... I think one of my mm. first jobs was to do $25 character illustrations. Uh. And I think about 200 I did for that wow. person. And that cost me months. So For five thousand dollars. Yeah. So when you hear that number, like five thousand dollars, <laughs> when you're barely twenty, it's like, yeah. yeah, that is that is amazing. I think that's the same. Do you ever find the nibs of the pen in the Cintiq to start causing your line work to catch? I have a bamboo tablet, and the nibs really get worn down. Oh. Did, did you did you ever change the nib on your Cintiq? Uh, not for the Cintiq, but the, the right? normal Wicca yeah. more. Yeah, this so it must be, good. yeah. Yeah. Teresa said the same thing, never change the nib. Really? <laughs> never. Thank you for reminding us of the contest, Evil Series. There is an ongoing contest on adobelive.com at the bottom right of the um, interface there's a button that links you to the Edvard Munk competition and basically there you can download the brushes that Kyle Webster has created for the contest uh, the brushes are based on the real brushes that Edvard Munk used to, cre to create his painting the the scream and uh, you can use those on in Photoshop or in uh, Photoshop sketch on your iPad or Android tablet so to recreate your own version of the screen. And there's, uh, um, they're free, you can, you can use them, you can try them out, um, uh, they're, you know, just get them. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, also, um, uh, one thing that's super um, interesting is that there's a grand prize, there will be a winner at the end. Um, uh, there's a really great jury that's gonna select the grand, the grand prize winner at the end. And the end of the contest is July the 14th. So there's still a lot of, that, that's, that's almost three weeks to complete your project. So yeah. uh, if you want to participate, please do and uh, read the rules and regulations of the, uh, of the contest. And the grand prize is pretty huge. It's 6,000 euros in cash. Uh, a ticket to Adobe Max, uh, which will be ho held in Las Vegas this year uh, in October. A ticket to Adobe Max, including flights and hotel and everything. Everything paid. You get to go to Adobe Max. Um, uh, also, one year of Creative Cloud, 100 uh, credits on Adobe Stock, and uh, also uh, a trip to Oslo to go to the Monk Museum and see the winning painting right there, exposed in the Monk Museum in Oslo. Yeah, so you have two trips, which is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen that in a contest, mm. two different trips be part of that. Robin says, I remember when Sus had, uh, had to make the weirdest combination of characters with animals. Yes! <laughs> What's that, that, that? that was actually the $25 one. Okay. <laughs> I, I had to make uh, a giraffe with human rear legs and uh, the head of uh, Kate Beckingsale. Hmm. So wow. That was, yeah, that was interesting. 
I also did some uh, covers for uh, <laughs> romance novels. You know, the, the yeah. typical one of the, the sexy man mm -hmm. uh, wearing a... This was like for fire fireman yeah. and police romance novels. They were really funny. Oh, Limoleo says, finally thunder. Where? <gasps> bye bye, 35 In degrees. The Netherlands. Is it here? Limoleo? He's, he's from the Netherlands? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Finally. You guys were boiling as well. They were. They promised thunder here in Paris, mm. and they scrapped it from the menu three times. Oh, okay. Come back, and then it goes. <laughs> well, again. there's there's clouds outside. It's very heavy. Yeah, it's really thick air. So there's going to be a lot of loose fabric, which means there will be some folds, and these folds all go and and follow the shape of the body. Mm. And that's only because it is not tight. So mm. let's say there was a tight sleeve, then the folds would go the other way, that direction, mm. because there would be some pull going on. And now the only pull going on is that of gravity, so it hangs down. So you get these saggy sleeves. Ciao, Tickfish, Suzanne. Do you draw animals too, or just people? Yes, we just said animals. Yeah, I, animals I, mixed into people and animals alone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't do them as much as Therese because that's her specialty. But I, I've done them before. I've actually designed uh, an mm. animal for a Chinese movie. Ah. Yeah. And, uh, I wonder if that's ever gonna be released. That was that was quite interesting. Hey, Adam Fox, 41 in the Bay Area, that's 41 centigrade? Wow, hot in the Bay Area as well. I was in India a few weeks ago and it was 45 degrees centigrade. <sighs> Whoa. Like you need some something on that shoulder. Look weird, ornamental-looking thing. I think that's the influence because of the armory museum I went to. Mm. They had some really cool uh, Japanese uh, armors as well. Oh wow, some these are armor. awesome. I think that is saying, would you recommend setting goals in your sketchbook, like spend a week on faces, a week on clothing, a week on bodies, a, a week on hands, etc.? Oh yeah, I think that's definitely mm -hmm. definitely a good thing. I actually have a schedule like that online on my Deviant Art, because mm. I used to train myself by, by schedule that way. So it's definitely recommendable, but, but don't switch between topics too much, you need to linger to a topic for quite a while in order to get something, get some actual results. Hey Count Zero, I am old school, okay? I say centigrade, I don't say Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I even have these cool like things on the shoulders. Yeah. there and we want to repeat this shape language in other places otherwise it looks like uh, it just scrambles together a bunch of things but you want it to look like it's done by the same designer Paul Weaver is cold here today cold cold well Where I'm gonna be at? I'm gonna be in Scotland in a couple of weeks and I'm I'm looking forward to the the fresh breeze Good. Where, whereabouts in Scotland? All around. All around. It's a road trip. Yep. Oh, sweet. So Richard Merrill is making good points. Some artists can draw animals, but not people. You can always get away with less subtlety with proportions in animals. That's true. And you know why? Because um, we know our our semb semblance so so well. I mean, you know, we see each other. We see each other as people. Uh, we look at at us at each uh, at us in the in a in a mirror. So we really know how 
a face works because we interact with faces every day and that's why when there is the even the the smallest error in a face you can it can be spotted immediately yeah in the face of a frog it doesn't really matter i don't know if the eyes are here or here <laughs> yeah i'm gonna tilt your head differently otherwise you should look like a shy wizard ah no <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm an introvert, so I could be a little bit shy. So I'm gonna... Oh, control D. I'm gonna mask out a little bit of the older lines so they don't confuse me here, so I don't get messy. Uh, Adam Fox is saying this illustration should be mashed up with Therese's dragon she's working on. <laughs> Yeah, guys, remember remember the uh, the killer lamb at 10 p.m. tonight. <laughs> the killer lamb. Ooh. Yeah, because Terry said she can she can do a killer lamb in impression. That would be interesting. And I promise that if she does the killer lamb impression, uh -huh. I do the deliverance pig expression <gasps> impression. What is that like? Oh, I can't say. You, haven't you never seen the movie Deliverance? When when this group of of friends like navigate down the river in some canyon and no, it's a familiar title to me, but I don't everything think like goes to hell. There's a really bad scene where one of the actor has to has to pretend he's a pig. <laughs> oh, Chris is an introvert. Okay, cool. Well, I'm definitely an introvert. Staff should probably match the design of the clothing as well. So we got this cool that thing going on. Yeah, hashtag killer lamb. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> killer lamb. I can just not imagine at all what that would sound like. Nessuno says it's an unconvinced wizard. <laughs> yeah. I look unconvinced. Yeah, like, should I turn you into a killer <laughs> lamb or in a frog? Yes, Paul, you are responsible for restarting that thread about hashtag killer lamb. Yep. <laughs> if Therese asks who started it, I said, Paul Weaver did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paula, Paula Reva says he's thinking, mm, did I leave the oven on? Yeah. <laughs> so many of you are coming back. This is so awesome, and that you know you've seen you've seen the streams through the, throughout throughout the three days, and you've seen uh, even the night shift stream. So cool. It's always cool to see familiar faces return. How many of you have just joined the stream? Have just discovered the stream? This Adobe live stream on digital painting. Let's hear it in the chat. Right now, this character is way too symmetrical, so we need some asymmetry going on. So I was thinking about some, some cool collection of, of bags right there. Maybe, maybe there's things sticking out from there, but I don't want to break the silhouette too much. So it should be higher. All right, Blake, Donald, awesome. 
So if you've missed the last two days, there's the replay button on, uh, on adobelife.com. Oh, Adam, thank you. Yes, we're trying to do our best to get talented artists and designers to, you know, to keep you coming back. <laughs> so the future live stream subjects, we're actually currently we're streaming these three day streams every two weeks. And the next subject is, I'll tell you right away. Let's see if I have the information, otherwise we'll ask Michael. Maybe Michael is listening somewhere. Nope, I don't have the information right now. But we will be live from San Francisco. Ooh, that's the next one? Mm-hmm. Cool. So here I applied some asymmetry. Making sure that most of the things are going towards the right side of the character. Mm. And yes, these live streams are global. Um, they, they are not, uh, they're actually a global initiative, yes. I personally also do uh, German streams, streams in German, because we have a lot of people watching streams from Germany. So uh, I'm going to start with German streams in German in September again, and we're, I'm going to do one German stream every month. Wow. That's my goal. That is cool. Yes, Seneca, uh, you found out two days ago may have been terrible, what may have been a terrible find as I have been less than productive on my own projects. I get so mesmerized. Okay, that's so cool. You know, it's all getting used to it, like having it on on some other monitor maybe and you continue with your work. Uh, sometimes we have people, you know, taking care of their kids or uh, cooking, watching the stream. So I'm making you a little bit more demonic. Is that okay? Hmm? You're gonna make me what? Oh, the horns! <laughs> <laughs> and I made your your smile a little wild and wider there, hmm. just to get that contemplative look a little less and more of a. I'm gonna change you into a frog. Have you ever had long hair? Yes. Well, not long hair, like here, shoulder, maybe. They get some shoulder-length hair again. Maybe I can show you a reference picture. Yeah, you see, this one here I had like pretty. Oh, yeah. Really have enough planning in the top to start doing some colors. Yeah, Evil Series only one week free for you since uh, from September onwards. <laughs> oh, there you go, Paul. Paul Trani is in the house. Hey, Paul. The next stream is about studio photography, July 11, 12, and 13. Awesome. That's right. And Jason Levine will be hosting together with um, uh, Michael. Well, Paul, the event is now it's immaterial. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be in the UK. Suzanne is from Amsterdam. Yeah. And uh, Therese is from uh, Sweden. 
And are you guys happy to be here in Paris? A little bit. A little bit, Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right, Paula Riva, Jason Levine. That one will call for pop popcorn, yes. <laughs> Jason is quite an entertainer. Yeah. Man has the ability to make a, a crowd go wild. Mm -hmm. This shoe is too big. Ah, I'm glad you like the you like the new show, Adam. Uh, that's that's a good kind of different kind of show. Um, the one you mentioned, the the one on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. By the way, all of these uh, live streams will be archived also on the uh, Adobe uh, Creative Cloud YouTube channel. And uh, there's a whole bunch of really interesting stuff happening there. Check it out. There's a button to go and check out the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. By the way, on AdobeLive.com. Michelle Gutierrez, regards from the Canary Islands. Nice. Ooh, nice I, was there, I was there once. Yeah? Hmm? How's the weather there right now? It's probably sweltering. Windy. lines I think we are ready for color so then I change it all to black lines or sometimes the horns I have a problem with the horns yeah yeah because in like in it in Italy uh -huh. horns mean like your wife is cheating on you really mm -hmm. yeah huh. so I have a problem with the horns <laughs> and if I if I turn it into a helmet with horns can it not be hair floating yeah, but then it, it misses this this center point. Oh. Mm. See if I remove the horns. Even if I turn that into hair. We're we're gonna look here. This is like the composition thing. Ah, uh, okay. Well, but it's your it's your illustration. It's like a, a Viking wizard. In Portugal, it's the same. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, Rob, Rob, uh, Robzilla in the house. Robert Generate the Third. He says horn knee. It's <laughs> not uh, like this. That's a helmet. So you're not actually uh -huh. the one with horns. Okay. All right. A helmet. A helmet okay, works. Good. Oh, a hood. That Donald is saying. No, no. But she needs something that that balances the illustration so. yeah ears nah <laughs> <laughs> giant ears it will almost be like weird bunny ears that way and that would mean a whole lot of doesn't that mean lion? maybe a more oriental headpiece maybe but like i like to mix cultures together i think i should start coloring because we got one hour left. Let's yes. see how far I get. What would be a cool palette? Anything that should be complementary to your skin color. I'm gonna grab the color here, even though it's not 100% accurate. It's probably a little bit more. There. A wizard hat. Mm -hmm. Samurai helmet. A throne on my head. A throne? <laughs> no. Like the Game of Thrones sword throne, but then as a hat. Gandalf like wizard hat. No, I think that's fine now. Yeah, right? Good. Alright. 
as a base point. Let's see, we can go for a bluish palette or maybe something with reds. I always like the co the combination of blue with yellow. Hmm. That's that for you. Yeah. Oh. It's nice. Oh, okay. A screenshot from what Chris just said it says Jonas DeRoe. Do you know Jonas DeRoe? Yep. I saw him actually a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Seattle. What what about him? Yeah, so is it possible for you to co-work with Jonas Zero anytime on Adobe Live? Like have him have him as a guest? Yeah, you guys should do that. Mm. He is a very busy man though. Mm. Always traveling, that guy. Yeah, I'm doing this really, really simple, like nothing too clean. Warmer yellows. For the accents. So I'm imagining everything just as flat colors, which means I'm not thinking about any sort of lighting just yet. Not even colored lighting, because I think I'm gonna have you do some sort of spell, and that spell is gonna have a color, and that will eventually influence the colors we have with the clothing. I just reposted it for you, Rapzilla. I'm gonna put Rob Zeller's link here as well. Combination with that, a nice type of leather. Bit, I will actually merge all these colored layers. Chris, don't worry. I I screenshotted your um, your suggestion, and uh, I will hand it over to Michael Sheds. That's pretty crazy, Thomas. Thomas Butcher. That's not, that's not really a centaur. A centaur has like the full body as well coming out. Oh yeah. This is like my head stuck on a headless horse. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna show it very quickly. See what I mean? It's like my head stuck on a headless horse. Centaurs have like their whole, their whole upper body coming up from, from the horse. Nice try, though. Nice try. Let's merge these. The pen pressure is really intense. Unless, like, I have to push really hard to get the full color, and I didn't even realize. But why are my colors just only going halfway? Donald is asking, do you ever color inside a selection? 
color inside a selection. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually what I'm, I'm going to do. In yeah. about a few there seconds. you go. And Ricardo, Ricardo Ferreira says Caldera is a super project. Yay! Thank you! That is awesome to hear. I've been working on that since 2013. It's been a long time coming. So I'm cleaning up this region just a little bit so we can do some actual lighting in just about a sec. There. So I don't want to have too much of a light information just yet in these fabrics as I put the colors down. So if I make something too light or too dark, it's gonna look weird. Robzilla likes the way you say 13. How do you say 13? 13. 13. I wasn't even aware that came with an accent. <laughs> In my own country, they always make fun of me of how I say man or or son, but then in my own uh, language. Cause... Yeah, because it's, uh, yeah. yeah. But well, the really cool thing about countries like uh, like the Netherlands and Denmark and Sweden and the, the Nordic countries basically is that they don't translate movies. No. So that's why you guys speak English so well is because all movies are always undertitled. Yeah. So you, kids get exposed to the language at a very early age and, uh, and learn it. Yeah, we also get it in primary school. Hmm. Helps a lot. Well, Anna, yeah, um, Robzilla, the, this Robzilla guy <laughs> makes these illustrations only with Photoshop. They look like vector illustrations. Well, technically, they are vector illustrations because uh, Robzilla uh, uses um, Adobe Illustrator Draw on the iPad quite a lot. Do you ever use other, um, do you do everything on the iPad, uh, Rob? I don't, I don't remember if you also like paint in Photoshop and things like that, but mostly, mostly it's Adobe Illustrator Draw, which actually generates uh, vector illustrations. Oh, I included the line art. Whoopsie, should have locked it. So now I don't have the line art on a separate layer. Ah. That's all right, though. We'll work around that. I think I, I told that yesterday as well. I explained something about locking layers and mm -hmm. how I always make the mistake of painting in the wrong layer. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Illustrator as well. Okay. But basically vector, this vector graphics. Cool. Brown and blonde, somewhere in between. Does your hair get golden in the summer or not? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Especially when I go to the sea. Oh yeah, with that salt water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my hair tends to do that too. And then in the winter, it gets really dark, almost brown. That's right, Anna. Rob is in the chat. Robzilla says he's hiding, although he's answering in the chat. That's not hiding. <laughs> that should be base, something like that. And that's when the magic is going to happen. The moment I start using levels. I link it to this base figure. And we're going to think about the highlights. I like the 
this to pop out. So you can get a good gist. How many of you actually work with levels? So I'm gonna explain it a little mm. bit. Um, there's all these different sliders and they all do a different thing. You got this bottom slider that goes from black to white, the gradient. If you move that around, it actually reduces all the blacks and, and turns that into a mid-tone. Like it moves everything lighter. And this reduces all the whites, making everything darker. Everything of a light value darker. Now this top one almost works the same way, but this one only takes the darker colors and makes it darker to a point where you reach, if you reach here, then you're in a region of the mid colors and it will include that too. So it's more of a, almost a systematic way of it. And here it takes all the whites and as you move to the mid tones, then it makes the mid tones lighter all the way to here, see, so it's fully white. But we want some highlights, so I'm gonna actually nib away at the blacks, not too much, and push this lighter pretty extreme. <laughs> Limoleo says, no, I use exposure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's also a so method. Now with this, I fill it up with black, just with bucket tool as if nothing happened. With a Pinocchio emoji though. <laughs> ah, he's lying. Where did my brush go? There. this to become the main light source. Everything coming from the hand, there will be streaks coming through it. Now as you can see here, when I go over the darker colors, it doesn't seem to do much. So what I do to solve that, I go back in here and I say, I want even less darkness to be loud in there. Adam Fox, you can also hold down the optional alt key with those sliders to see the lightest and or darkest places in your photo. Ooh. Have you tried that? No. How do I do that? Alt key? And in the sliders? I touch the sliders. Oh, that? that? Yeah. Press the alt key? Yeah. No. Know. Oh. Maybe that's on a PC. Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh, but it only does it with this one. Weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Adam. Maybe I should actually draw out the magic effect so I know exactly where it should go. What color should it have? Hmm. I'm thinking something blue as well to stick in that team. Uh, only with the dark and the light, not not the mid tones. Oh, okay. So. I like I like using this brush for that. I thought maybe a spell that goes behind. Shut this down behind. And Omnicube says you're only seeing a little because of her masks. Oh, because I masked it. Okay. Thank you, chat. Now this, to me, is already with too much texture and too sharp. But what I like with this brush is that it gives really weird shapes. And then I go into... Filter, blur, all sorts of blur, maybe maybe a motion blur for this one. Just to make This could much. also be a like motion on a path blur. Oh yeah. So let's do that. Filter blur. I think it's in, in the filter gallery. Blur gallery. Path, path blur. Yeah. Okay. And then you can you can just click on the you make a path. 
Uh -huh. Wait. Edit blur shapes. Oh, oh, oh. Where, is, where is it disappearing? <laughs> oh. Ah, why is it doing that? I don't know. Is it's it ah, maybe me, the mouse? No. No, it's just not reacting to. No, just escape, work. press escape. It's going out of the screen as well. There you go. That wasn't full screen. I try more blurs. Also, when you're not happy with the shape to the mm -hmm. fullest, I, I do stuff like this. Uh, transform. Just above that, there's something called Puppet Warp. Yes, ah, there we go, it was hidden. So I change everything in tiny little, what's the word, fractals, I think? And you can pin some down to keep them in their spot. But you can also then take one of those pins mm -hmm. and move it about. So it will stretch and do exactly how you want it to go. Oh, maybe I want this to be bigger. This is also a method I use whenever I come up with a pattern and I want that to be on clothing and the fabric is all wavy. Mm -hmm. oh, I will then use yeah. this and be able to warp it in such a mm -hmm. such a way that it should work. Rupesh says, hi Suzanne. Hello. Yeah, there's so many things to discover in Photoshop. Is we're always saying that that you know, like, hardly can you know everything. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm always saying is, or maybe you don't use everything, you don't have to learn about everything. But I think it's very important to know that certain things that of all the things that exist. For example, you know, this puppet warp, or uh, you know, or the 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 uh, the the, uh, the motion blur on a path, etc. Just to know that these things exist, so that one day when you when you will actually need them, you know that they exist. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a place where maybe it should be centered all around the hand. We have this pretty central composition with your hand. Normally, I position hands so that it it breaks the silhouette and mm -hmm. goes out of it. That's right. Always good to have it in the bag for when you think you could use it. Was with you? We had the discussions yet on the in the chat about the certifications, exams, and things oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and that certification exams are a good way of finding out about most of the things that an application can do because you have to learn about them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Adam says, if someone says they know everything about Photoshop and their name is not Russell Brown, don't believe them. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to influence some of the background. So I don't just want to work on a gray canvas, but have a little bit of a... Just so that this magic spell will get to its right a little bit better. Oh, happy vacation, Robzilla. Enjoy it. Thanks for swinging by. I'm to try a new effect all together. There's a thing with magic effects, I can never really fully be satisfied with them. Really light up the character. 
Right, so let's get back to lighting him. We still had the mask going on. So you want the bottom of the face to get some light. Oops, not that much. Hey Herr Malwolf, welcome back. Suzanne is working on a magician with a familiar face. <laughs> I think... Yes. Somebody mentioned that they could design the Creative Cloud logo like that. Let me just show you what I did uh, on my Behance. You'll find this. And basically what I create, I created fake flames on a path to recreate, like almost like a, like a flame sculpture. See, uh, like this. Oh, yeah. See, See that's how you can do the really pretty uh, yeah. magic effects. And that's also a tree generated in Photoshop. An eclipse generated in Photoshop. That's a lot of flames, I know. The flame filter, yep. Here I, I created flames along a path. distracting. I usually end up having some sort of rim lighting as well. <laughs> Maybe from the left in this case. Zulfugar is asking, so Suzanne, how would you describe a perfect artwork or illustration? The perfect one. Mm -hmm. I think the one that conveys a story the way it was designed. So I, I, I'm not the biggest fans of artwork that are meaningless. Even though this one doesn't have a story just yet, he's just doing a spell. But the, the artworks that I really, really like um, always tell tells more than just one stage of the story. There's this really uh, nice artwork by Cynthia Shepard where there is a woman who is holding a skull and then behind that woman is a version of the same woman trying to comfort the woman with the skull and another woman ignoring both women and she's, I think she's throwing around rose petals. Do you recognize it here somewhere? Yeah, that's a crop of it. It's part of the bigger picture. Hmm. But otherwise, just show the crop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some pretty, pretty rad Story digital time. painting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. blue going on in the spell, I always take that color and then add that in the clothing. Although this piece is tending to get pretty messy at this point. Oh, 
That's what you get from the Juan Oracle Pablo now. is back. Who is that wizard? Good wizard or bad wizard? Is there? Do you, do you recognize the face? Maybe. Yeah, it lost a lot of detail in this <laughs> stage, so let's get the reference back. If there were no Adobe programs, would you be a traditional painter or another profession? I think it would be a, a traditional painter, yeah, mm. eventually. Grab some stuff from Google. Yeah, I accidentally merged the line art with the rough colors. So we lost all the details of the lines mm. I did earlier. Put them back in. Maybe give you really, really light blue eyes. Like there's magic in there from the spell. So Juan Pablo said that's an evil, evil but kind-hearted wizard. <laughs> <laughs> How is that even possible? Evil and yeah, kind Rufal, Rufus, the devil magician of the night shift. That's right. Pretty cool lighting going on in the picture. See that? Mm, the yeah, here? yeah, yeah. That was kind of like lucky. <laughs> Let's see if I can implement that in there. Oh, Ryan says, could you maybe do a save as, and hopefully the last saved file has the line art. Maybe you saved the file when it oh, was line no, art. It's, and still, then it's still untitled. Unsaved. It's still unsaved. It's still unsaved. Yes, <laughs> Suzanne likes to live dangerously. Oh, yeah. But I, I never it's, feel very It's not like Therese. Therese is every second movement is command S, command yeah. S, command S. Yep. Oh. I consider this just a sketch. Diego is asking how do you choose the first layer of color? Mm. Plan the color before adding the lights and shadows. Well, it was a very quick decision. Um, yeah. Hmm. I think I I just searched for a complementary color for the hmm. skin. I think that's how I started out. And I thought blue would suit you. And then I choose everything based about around that blue color. So something blue greenish would mm. not stand out too much or something like mm. yellow would jump out immediately which is great because that's where you want the tiny details to go Well, with with painting, with the digital painting, using history or um, you know, like go back and like do the undos, um, it's kind of hard because every brush stroke is an um, is an action yeah. that was taken. So that would take a lot of history. Ooh, oh, there's celebrate. a party outside. Yeah. Somebody's screaming. Actually, quite a few people are screaming. Yeah. Positively screaming, though. Well, if you want to post images, uh, post them to Twitter and use the Adobe Live hashtag. Limoleo has a post with Rufus on a horse. Hmm. Oh. I'm, I'm very curious.
Oh, Negar says, thanks for introducing Cynthia Shepard, Suzanne. Ooh, yeah. yeah, she's really good. If you're looking for more people, look for Tyler Jacobson. Hmm. Well, he's one of my great examples. Oh, and Herr Malworth is traveling to Ireland tomorrow for five days with, with his class. Oh, cool. Hope I can take some nice pictures. Well, I, I don't think you need to hope that. You will take nice yeah, pictures. Yeah, just do yes. it. <laughs> just do it. I keep clicking. I want to do a lot of nice pictures in Scotland in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. No, there is no deadline for the Rufus picture. Just just say Rufus D on Twitter and I'll see it. There's no deadline. There is a deadline, however, for the Edward Monk contest. Yes. Let me just go back here. And um, I'm just gonna talk about the Edward Monk um, contest just for a second. There we go, just block that. Okay, perfect. Let me just go over to my screen. Because down here, there is actually a, um, a button that says Monk Contest, all right, on adobelive.com. And also here, enter the contest. Michael actually created two buttons because this contest is so cool. And basically what this will uh, lead you to is this page where um, there's a little introduction video and basically what we did is um, have Kyle Webster to recreate the brushes that um, Edward Monk used to paint his famous The Scream painting. And basically the brushes are based on the original ones that, uh, that the museum uh, very generously uh, gave all the information that, um, that Kyle needed to actually reproduce those brushes. And these brushes, you can download them for free and use them as much as you want, uh, either in Photoshop CC or in uh, Adobe Photoshop Sketch on your um, on your iPad or on your Android tablet. Okay, so download the brushes, and then um, there's a couple of tutorials. You know how to get started with the with the brushes, how to install the brushes, how to paint, how to how to do things with these brushes. And then there is the contest. And basically, the contest is that we invite you to uh, to recreate your own version of the screen by using these brushes. All right, and um, and there's there's actually a, the grand the grand prize winner will get six thousand euros in uh, in cash, uh, a ticket to Adobe Max to uh, to join the biggest creativity conference uh, there is last year in San Diego we had over 13,000 people joining us from all over the world so a ticket to Adobe Max including flights and hotel and everything uh, a one year subscription to the Creative Cloud 100 stock credits Adobe stock credits and uh, and uh, last but not least uh, and that's I think that's the best part of the competition is that the winning painting the winning digital painting will be exhibited in the Monk Museum and the winner will get to go to Oslo to the yeah. Monk Museum to see their painting next to the original scream uh, that Monk painted. So uh, so that's really, really cool. The deadline for this is July, um, July 14th at midnight and the winner will, there's going to be only one winner, will be announced on July 28th. So be sure to participate using Kyle's brushes, Kyle's uh, specifically created brushes uh, for, for, for this uh, competition. And of course you can keep them, you can, you can even use them and not participate in the competition yeah, if you want. But free. it would be, would be very cool if you did participate, all right? Also make sure to read, to read the fine print, like the official rules and the terms and conditions and see if you can participate. Zulfugar is asking, hey Suzanne, do you have an artist page? Where can I follow your work? Uh, On there's Caldera. multiple, yeah, but yeah. there's also <laughs> uh, an artist page where you probably as an artist also have your page, which is ArtStation. ArtStation. So you just type my name and you'll find me on ArtStation, as well as places like DeviantArt, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. always a welcome to add me in any of these places.
still really weird to paint in your non-owned workspace. Ah, uh, yes, I bet, I bet, I bet it is. Because you tweaked all the brushes and everything. Yeah, and even even the pen. Mm -hmm. He's uh, got this button, so uh, every time I accidentally click it, this uh, okay. opens. I think there's also the pen pressure. Like each of us, all four of us, have a different preference on pen pressure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Like for example, um, Therese like has has a very strong pressure. Uh, she changes the pressure to very strong. Let's see, at home I hardly have to press it to get the full extent of the color. Here I have to really force my hand. No Limoleo, don't use the at, use the hashtag Adobe Live. What's your Twitch channel? Well, search for it. Yes, on Twitch? Um, yeah. I'm Suzanne Helmick everywhere. I don't do nicknames or anything. Really boring like that, huh? But still. There's this neat trick that I got from... How do you get the brush stroke preview? I just get a list of names. So if you uh -huh. go here... Tip. To a little wheel thingy there, you can choose. Um, mm -hmm. Text only, small thumbnail, large thumbnail, small list, large list, or stroke thumbnail so that's how you get it like this so just find that here in your uh, brush region there you go fx node but there's this other little trick that got from tyler jacobson is photo filter you can actually apply that to painting mm -hmm. so right here if i say warm filter for that paint in the mask as well since we have a lot of blues, it could be really cool that mm -hmm. wherever it's not blue, it could be a little warmer in temperature. So I mask it a little bit back in those other regions. And I could do the same thing with so again, photo filter, cooling filter. Really helps to intensify your colors a little bit better. And since we only have 25 minutes, I think I'm gonna mm -hmm. reduce this to portrait. Because if I'm gonna go through all of this, we're three hours ahead. So let's see. I'll make a copy of what I got. Put everything else in a folder that I'll close. And then enlarge it. get a whole lot of the details back. Oh, have you ever? Maybe they, maybe you have a good answer for that. Anna is asking uh, maybe a bit off topic, but are there any efficient slicing tools or plugins for Photoshop which you would recommend to accelerate the slice up process in Photoshop? I need that to create sprites for spreadsheet for games. Slicer? Yeah. I'm not even sure of what that is. Slicing is like, uh, so you have your, your canvas and uh, basically you can define areas on the canvas that will be exported as PNGs or GIFs or JPEGs. Um, oh. But now I would, um, can't you use just, um, 
Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, what, what is it you find difficult with the Photoshop slicing tools? I would be interested to know. And Kim Friesland is asking, is there a hotkey option to turn off and turn on and off the transparency to paintbrush? Of the paintbrush? The transparency of the paintbrush? I think there is, yeah. but it's all manually, you can mm. change that. Yeah. Uh, I think I use that hotkey, but if you want to work with your hard keys or don't know where one is... Oh, somebody else is answering already. Yeah, pick the brush tool and you can use a numerical keyboard to set transparency number. Just press 25, 25, okay. Yeah, that's right, Adam. Export assets. Slices are so 2005. That's right. <laughs> yes, export assets. That's a very good, good point uh, for your sprite sheets. That could actually be a very good solution. Because that's we're 2017 now. Oh, Paula said, I left for lunch when you were just starting to apply colors and just got back. Wow. Yeah, I can go pretty fast. I show this process very often on my own streams. And Greggy Frost, I think that's the first question from Greggy Frost. Suzanne, what is your highest goal in terms of art? Highest goal? I think that is to finish my book. Mm, and, and that's a good that. goal. Yeah. Yep. The Kaldara book. Yes. Let me just put the link again. Yeah, that's been a lot of work requires hundreds of illustrations and also a tremendous amount of concept art so before I make these illustrations I want to design everything what it looks like the clothing to the buildings to their swords everything that you'll get to see in the book has some design drawings done Cordell would Adobe ever consider adding a lazy mouse stabilization to the brush tool for more precise drawing. Lazy mouse stabilization. Do you know what that is? No. no. Like like a slow mode? Maybe. Maybe they should explain it to us. Yeah. What, do, what does that mean for you? What is a lazy mouse stabilization? When do you plan to publish the book, Ryan asks? Somewhere next year. I'm being really 2018. About that. Yes. 2018 will be the year of Suzanne Helmich. Hopefully. That'll be cool. All right, how to reduce hand jitter in your lines, okay. Oh, Little... Lazy Nazumi. Mm, lazy Nazumi, yeah, do you know that? Yeah, I okay. do know that. Do you use it? No, but I do know a lot of people who use it. And it's it's kind of like what you used to get in Flash, where your lines get cleaned. Let's sort of vector move. Oh wow, <laughs> that reminds me of the Old Spice commercial, like I'm a horse. No, you know who that is. What? Really? Yeah. Oh man. Alright Limo Leo, just because it's you. And right back to Suzanne's work. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
I must add, we have a lot of lamps in the studio and at home. I work in the dark. So I have a feeling if I get to see this file at home, I'm like, Zeus, what have you done with the values? What are you doing? Is your main character in the book based on Charlie Hunman? Hunnam. Hunnam? No, no, but at some point my friend pointed that out as well. Like, ah, oh, okay. he looks like him. Like, oh, oh. I guess, uh, I guess he does. Ha ha ha, yeah. Rufus's Russian roots. <laughs> Just because it's you, Lemoleo. Rachel says, I find digital painting intimidating. I'm more comfortable with graphite drawing. What is your advice for someone when they first transition to digital? Uh, just don't give up. Keep pushing it because it's really, really tough. To, mm -hmm. Especially if you don't have a Cintiq but have a normal uh, Wacom. It's really tough to get that hand-eye mm -hmm. coordination going without being able to look at your hands. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a... A struggle you need to get through, but once you're through it, it's like it's like learning how to ride a bike. At some point, there's just this light bulb that switches on in your head, and everything will work out. I mean, I started with traditional myself as well, and I remember it being such a pain when I tried to do digital. Yeah, and one thing that I've noticed as well that many um, many of our guests do is that um, don't think about the command Z. Um, think more about it like you know really painting and if if you make a mistake try to correct the mistake but in the painting yes without command Z command Z is is actually blocks you at first because you command Z on almost every stroke um, so it's much better to to paint and draw and take the risk you know Yeah, you're, you're allowed to uh, to make mistakes with this. It's not like when you work with oil paint, the moment you put mm. a, a black smudge into something, mm. like, oh yeah, well, this has to become dark. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, you yeah. just grab a lighter color and mm -hmm. fix it. That's right, Zulfagar, making mistakes is definitely part of the process. Yeah, that's how you learn. I mean, how many of you are actually working digital and how many stick to traditional still? Hmm. I say still, as if you have to change. You <laughs> don't have to, of course. I've actually been meaning to get back more to traditional as well and experiment with oil paint. Maybe, maybe I can combine uh, oil painting with digital, where I start off in oils and then finish it up digitally. Surveyor Bob, does anyone know if the issues of Photoshop working on the Wacom Cintiq Pro have been addressed or not? Do you know of any any issues? There were issues? There, well... I wasn't aware of I wasn't issues. aware of it. I mean, I haven't seen any issues in these three days that we've been streaming on a Cintiq. Maybe it wasn't the other streams. No, I don't know. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Mm. 
Oh, now they're talking about among themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going to join the monk uh, contest? Yeah. Anybody here in the chat trying the monk contest? You still have until July the 14th, so a lot of time. Yeah. Because I think I saw someone in a previous stream who already sent in her, uh, her contest uh, oh. entry. Yeah. Oh, the Wacom Cintiq Pro, the new one. Hmm. I don't know. I I, I don't have the information. Uh, purveyor Bob. People will try me thinking about it. Mm. I so wish I could participate. Yeah, it depends. I know there's, I know there's this, this uh, sad fact about some countries that can't participate. But it, you know, it. Some people make it really. No, some countries make it very difficult to have contests. Yeah. Like Italy, for example. Italy is such a pain to make contests. Yeah, because there's something about gambling law. Exactly, involved. and things like yeah. that. I think Germany is like that as well. Though I'm not sure if it was on the list here. Yeah, I know Juan Pablo. That's it's a pain. Oh, Mary Moffat is saying our entire art team here at work is planning to enter. At least oh, eight wow. of us. That's awesome. That is cool. A little ongoing competition in your <laughs> yeah. workspace. Ah, and Ryan is working on it. It'll be a great challenge. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's not because we don't want the whole world to be able to participate. It's just that some countries make it very difficult uh, for companies to make uh, to make competitions contests. Yeah. What Nick Nick Alex S? No, this not, doesn't work in Germany. I didn't see Germany in the countries that could not participate. And by the way, Suzanne here uh, will is part of the jury. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be judging. She'll have on she'll that. have a say. Yeah, I'll be looking at originality. Mm -hmm. That is my main. Remember your interpretation of the scream. Yeah. See you later, Count Zero. See you for the night shift in about two hours. So we're nearing the end, and as a last yes. thing, I want to show something. I'll go to Art Station. Art Station. Suzanne. Because. Oh, wait, let's. Oh! Wow! It knows me by Suzanne, not even my last name. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. I very often show progress steps. I think this is also one of those images where I explain how I began. Mm. And it's originally the process I wanted to show in this stream. Where I start out with some rougher lines, go a little cleaner, do some of the basic colors, and then on top of that, which you can see right there, uh, with levels layers, I decide what's light and what's dark. This is a version with lines. And then I gradually think about bounce color and get everything clean together until it is done right there. That's awesome. So that's that yeah, remember that that website uh, that's on ArtStation? Mm -hmm. Just look for Suzanne, not even the last name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll find a whole bunch of things here from steps like I think I have the progress step of, of this portrait as well same thing blue lines some slightly cleaner lines with some base mm. colors and then slowly getting more details hey and this was the guy I did the screen for the other day hmm ah yes so if you're interested in all that um, it'll show here here's a typical step as well between flat colors and lighting
nearing the end, we got a really cool streamer after us, mm. so Sebastian. Uh, you. Yeah, we have Sebastian Hu coming back, and uh, but we still have like oh, maybe three minutes uh, just to yeah. finesse it a little bit. Yeah. Oh no, but that's the wrong time. Is it? Yes, I have the right time. Oh. Yes. Oh, that's why. Oh, I'm living in the future. Yes. Well, you know what? The Mac Pros have this thing with the clock that I don't understand. And here it says it's 250.58. What? See? It's different everywhere. Yeah. I know my time is correct. Okay. So my time is the right time. And we have three <laughs> more minutes. <laughs> yes, so um, so we will be back at the top of the hour with Sebastian Hu, who is going to uh, actually use a 3D model now in Photoshop and actually uh, do some some um, uh, an illustration using stock art on a 3D model in in Photoshop. That's going to be super interesting. And then uh, for the night shift. We have Therese Larsen again uh, to do the last night shift of this three-day stream on on digital painting and illustration. So um, so make sure uh, not to miss those. All right, top of the hour, Sebastian Hu with Michael Chez, and uh, then at 10 p.m. Central European time, uh, Therese and me will be back uh, for some some uh, digital illustration and. Um, uh, Wow, that's th these three days went by so quickly, super Suzanne. Fast. That's uh, it's unbelievable, super fast, right? Yes. But basically, you've been drawing six hours. Yeah. With us. Uh, all sorts yeah. of different things. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I mean, we did this the other day. The screen. We got some stock photo from uh, Adobe Stock. Mm -hmm. Where I did all these other faces. Ah, oh, yes, the face variations. Yeah. And I started off the base bits of this prism piece. Okay. There we go. Which is also still really, really rough. But it's hard to see the values with all the lamps around me, so that's why I decided, oh, mm -hmm. let's do a character instead. And last but not least, the Adobe Kadabra. <laughs> yeah. Wizard. I should actually just take my time and finish this at home. And you will? Something. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I want a, a nice be, result. That would be awesome. So everybody says, say thank you. Lots hey. of pressure to just win, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Suzanne. Your way to paint, I adore. Aww. Nice. Oh, oh, that Carol Titus. I thought that's enough. It's not Titus. Yeah, it's someone yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> someone else. All right. <laughs> All right, Suzanne. Anything? Any last words for our audience here on Adobe Live? Yeah, I'm looking forward to all the contest uh, contest. Yes, entries. that's right. It's Suzanne will be tough. on the jury. So, uh, so yeah, send those uh, send those uh, submissions uh, for the contest. Uh, I'm super. I'm really looking forward to see to see all of them. And like I said, we will be back at the top of the hour with Sebastian Hu and uh, Michael Chez for some. 3D and Photoshop illustration. So stay tuned and thank you, Suzanne. Thank, thank you so you. much for having been with us for these three days. Yes. Thanks for having me. <laughs>